On this channel, I tried to demonstrate that some small problems with bike infrastructure can make a big difference to whether or not someone chooses to ride. Research has shown that many people are interested in riding a bike, but don't, due to safety and other concerns. Finding safe routes isn't easy in many North American cities where high quality biking infrastructure can be sparse or absent. This is why I often say that Google impedes the uptake of cycling. When I have tried to plan a route to a part of my city where I've seldom ridden, I've noticed that using Google often gives me poor directions. Most often, Google suggests I ride on a high stress arterial road that doesn't have any bike infrastructure. In a previous video, I showed how Google hadn't updated their data to reflect that a major bridge in my city was closed for replacement. I made that video just a few months after the bridge was closed. It is now about 16 months after that bridge was closed and Google Directions still tells people who are walking or biking to use that bridge. In this video, I'll show a different issue with Google that exists in my city. The issue is due to a permanent change in a street design that happened three years ago. In the example I'll use to demonstrate this issue, I'll show that Google has updated its directions for vehicles and how this has created an error in its directions for people on bikes. At the end of the video, I'll share a few insights on how to get better biking directions. I've watched a lot of the TV show Parks and Recreations, so sometimes I get a craving for calzones. If you've watched previous videos on this channel, you may have also noticed that I like donuts. So, I searched on Google Maps to see how I could ride my bike from my favorite calzone place to my favorite destination for donuts. I used Google Maps because I don't know the area around my favorite calzone place very well. However, I did notice that there are problems with the two suggested routes. The main suggestion has a small section with no bike infrastructure. The secondary suggestion is to ride on this busy arterial road. If I'm riding with my daughters, who can only tolerate low levels of traffic stress, both of these routes are not acceptable. Here's where Google actually suggests that I ride to go from the Calzone restaurant to the donut shop. The start of the route is quite nice. It goes from residential roads to a painted crosswalk without lights, through an LRT stop, and then follows a multi-use path for some distance. There are issues of poverty through this area that may make some people on bikes uncomfortable. It's not Google's fault there's poverty in this area, it's most of my provincial government's fault for underfunding social programs. At this point, the multi-use trail turns into just a painted bike gutter, and that also ends, leaving me in a high-stress environment of mixed traffic. Short-term construction adds to the stress level, but as I said earlier, Google's algorithm responds slowly to changes in bike infrastructure quality due to construction. I stopped following Google at this point because I saw some bike route signs my city had posted. I missed that the bike route was supposed to follow the wide sidewalk, so I get lost in a parking lot before ending up where I would have been anyway if I had ignored the bike route signs. Again, I'll leave Google to follow the bike route signs. I assume I'm supposed to ride on the sidewalk as that's what my city does. If people on bikes would slow down the SUVs too much, my city just legalizes riding on a stretch of sidewalk. Right here, I missed a small sign that says I should have stayed on the sidewalk. Google has updated its directions and also thinks I should be on the road. Another hint that I should have been on the sidewalk is there are no curb cuts on the far side of the traffic circle, so I have to use this crosswalk. After crossing a plaza shared with pedestrians, I'm back on familiar bike lanes and have fairly good biking infrastructure all the way to the donut shop. From my experience, just following Google often requires biking on high stress roads. Suggesting high stress biking routes is a nudge from Google to drive instead of bike. Biking is not like driving, where the vast majority of the time, just following Google or any other commercial navigation app is fine. Wow, I could really go for a calzone. Give me directions to Batista Calzone. Getting directions to Batista's Calzone Company. When I use Google to plan a route for biking, it requires some local knowledge and a lot more effort than just entering a destination address. Trying to apply my local knowledge to plan a better route between the Calzone restaurant and the donut shop is where this story gets a bit more interesting. As you can see on Google Maps, there's a bike trail running north-south and a bike-friendly street running east-west near the Calzone restaurant. I can drag in two waypoints so Google will calculate the route using the infrastructure I spotted. And that appears to work. However, I was starting closer to the donut shop, so I thought I'd pick up a donut first and then get my calzone. Reversing the route gave me some weird results. 
Google Maps won't let me ride eastbound on the bike-friendly street. It looks like I need to go all the way into Street View to plan my route. Street View starts out looking fine. The residential street looks quiet enough to be fairly low stress, and across this strode, there's a contraflow bike lane. Wait a minute. People can ride a bike in either direction on the street, but people can only drive their SUVs westbound. Is that why Google Maps won't give me bike directions going eastbound on that street? That seems likely. But how long has Google had this error? In October 2020, the residential street ran both ways and there was no bike infrastructure. In June 2021, the Contraflow bike lane had been installed and the street was just one-way drivers. Unfortunately, Google's a black box, so I don't know how their data are updated. It appears the traffic data are being used, possibly from drivers who have Google Maps on their phone. That idea is supported by the bridge that is out. Google directions initially show the bridge as having very bad traffic, and now it's updated to a blockage. Google doesn't appear to make much use of location data from people walking or biking, so Google's algorithm doesn't update walking or biking directions like it does its driving directions. So, what can be done to improve directions apps for people biking? The best solution is to not design cities where it's assumed everyone wants to drive everywhere. Walking and biking gets confined to the leftover scraps of the city, which leaves large, unsafe gaps where people outside SUVs cannot travel. And if your city is only being planned for further SUV dependence, there's not much that can be done to improve walking or biking. There are some apps like City Guide that can give better bike route suggestions, but these types of apps tend to be confined to limited areas. For this video, I tried some apps that use OpenStreetMap data. My hope was that the OSM data would be updated faster than Google. This was true for the missing bridge, but the issue with the Contraflow lane is the same in OSM-based apps because of how the data are coded. The Contraflow lane is a subpart of the entire street, and it's the street that's coded as one way. I'm a very bad contributor to OSM, so I haven't figured out how to fix the problem. Plus, even if you have a good OSM editors in your area, I've had some bad experiences with OSM-based apps finding points of interest or addresses. That leaves only big commercial apps. Those are black boxes and just focus on SUV directions. Apple Maps seems to only have bike directions in Canada's three most populous cities, which makes it pretty useless for people on bikes. And that's my look at getting directions for people who want to ride bikes. As long as we continue to design cities for the convenience of SUVs, those cities will be inconvenient for everyone else. Plus, since getting around in an SUV is the least efficient form of mobility, cities designed for SUVs aren't even convenient for the people in SUVs. Please consider giving the video a like if bad directions have ever kept you from riding your bike somewhere. And please leave a comment with your bike direction horror stories or suggestions of apps that give good biking directions. Thanks for watching.